Microjig, maker of the gripper. Work safer, work smarter. With one face of each long rail flattened at the joiner and then both of them plain to thickness, I can square one edge at the joiner and then cut these to their final width. In order to connect the long rails to the footboard and headboard, I'm going to use this breakdown joinery, which consists of a latch side which connects onto this female side by latching onto it like that, and uh, that's what connects the two together. Now, in order to use this breakdown joinery, you have to mortise each side into the components that are going to be joined. So this has to be mortised into the ends of the long rails, and this side has to get mortised into either the footboard or the headboard. In order to get these brackets to fit properly, I need to square off each end of the mortise, and I'm gonna do that with a chisel. On the back side of the bracket, there's a little piece of metal that extends past the width of the, of the main section of the bracket. And that corresponding amount of wood needs to re be removed from the rail in order for the bracket to seat flush. Now, in order to get the location of that piece of metal on the rail, I'm just gonna seat the bracket into the rail and then just give it a few taps on the back side of the bracket. And it should make enough of an indent to tell me where to drill with a Forstner bit. It's a little bit snug, so I'm gonna adjust the uh, fence on the router and take one more light pass. I need to make a mortise inside this mortise to receive the hooks 
of the male portion of the bracket. Now I already traced out the opening for the female portion of the bracket, and but when I when I mortise out this hole for the for the male portion, I need to make it a little bit longer than the opening is on the female side because when the male portion goes inside the bracket, it actually slides down and hooks onto the female side. So what ends up happening is the male portion of the bracket extends down below the opening of the female portion. So when I make this mortise, I just need to make it a little bit longer. One thing I want to point out with these number eight wood screws is that in order to get the heads of the screws to sit flush with the bracket, I had to grind them down a little bit at the grinder. Now, if you were to use a smaller sized wood screw, you might be able to avoid that. Now that I have the knockdown joinery out of the way for the rails, I need to round over all of the edges and I'm going to do that at the router table. I need to work on the ledgers next, which are going to support the slats, which will support the mattress. And I'm going to get both ledgers from this one piece of cherry. I countersunk and pre-drilled for number eight wood screws so that I can attach the ledger to the rail. And I'm using a couple of spacer blocks which are clamped down to the rail to help guide the position of the ledger as I'm pre-drilling into the rail. The next thing I'm gonna do is work on the slats that will support the mattress and I'm gonna get all of those from Poplar. I assembled the footboard and the headboard to the rails and now I can mark for the length of the slats. In order for the slats to fit over the dowels, which are in the ledgers, I need to make a slot on each side of each slat. Now this serves to stabilize the slats underneath the mattress and it keeps them from moving around. And I've used this method with the dowels on I think all of my beds and I've been very happy with how it performs. As you can tell, the bed is finally finished and I'll be extremely glad to finally get this bed out of my wood shop. It takes up an incredible amount of space, obviously. So to those of you that watched all four parts of this bed build, thank you for sticking around and I really hope you enjoyed the series. So I might put on one more coat of uh, General Finish's armor seal and I think that'll do it. I'll bring it up to my son's room and uh, he can sleep on his new bed. Thanks for watching, guys.